I don't know why you guys are really here. Yeah. See that I've had a haircut. Still long on top, but short back and sides. Tom's very happy with himself, but the time has come. It's only taken five months. I, I get think... to choose paint. I need a 165. 165. Look at that, it's a little bit more brownie than the where, where? 130. Mm. No? I feel, I feel like that's going to come out too dark. Cool. Like, what yeah. about that? Should we get a state green? No, that's the colour I wanted to paint my bike. Okay, we need a 165. It's all going to be okay. We found the samples. It's all good. We're in safe hands with these samples. Right. Can you see the colour on the outside? No. No. Okay. This one's winning so far, ghost white. Let me show you what our thought process is. Okay, so so far we're liking maybe the chalk white on the back wall and the ghost white as an overall white. What do you think? I'm letting you decide <laughs> on paint. So I can be wrong. Right. We got the goods. We've got two colors, both a little bit gray, a little bit beige, one a tiny bit darker. And this is the trade paint that they do. I think it's a lot cheaper and it comes in massive tubs. So we're gonna see how we feel about this one because uh, you can save a little bit of money by buying that one. So we're gonna try this. Try these. It begins. The spare bedroom begins. The wall is so plastered and smooth and great that the focus isn't even working. Because it doesn't know what to focus on. Come on. Wow. Right, let's do this. So, I don't really know. <laughs> you gotta let it dry though as well. What we thought we were gonna get out of um, testing a white. Oh, oh, I'm happy with oh wait, undertones. what was no, that? No, 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 no. What was that? Good undertone. <laughs> what was that? There's no yellow. No. It's not brilliant, wait. it's not brilliant. No. What did you just say? What did you just say? Me and Tom had a very big argument about whether you could just buy any white paint. And you can't. So what we have here, is we're determining what white to buy. We don't want brilliant white. It's like very in your face and harsh. So we had this pure white and then magnolia. Um, I would rather dye than have yellow walls. So I think cotton white's gonna have to stay. Cotton white, pure cotton, it's gonna have to stay. Neither of these look like the beige and they certainly don't look like the picture but maybe they're gonna dry a little bit darker. So ultimately these two are gonna be for the back wall. Looking at them now, this probably isn't what we're gonna go for and we've learned our lesson. Pick a much darker color than you think you want. Um, now this is drying a little bit longer, I definitely prefer that one. I don't like the cool No, yeah, it's a bit too gray in that. Whereas this, I'm thinking this in like a couple of shades darker would be really nice. For sure, definitely darker. Darker than that, yeah. So, this is what we've got so far. We'll be back. We need more colors. We'll wait till it's dry and we'll go from there. So it's Friday morning. We've just turned up at the house. We thought we were going to get murdered. Someone stuck balloons <laughs> all over the front door. And it felt like there was going to be a clown inside. But we've realized our friends have done balloons for our moving in weekend. <laughs> yeah, I genuinely think this was, it was going to be like part three of it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my heart was racing. Very cute. Thank you guys. Very, very nice. I got a card. Yeah. Although opening the door. <laughs> Is there really that much to celebrate? <laughs> it looks so horrible versus the bright balloons. I don't like the balloons. And we had all this hidden um, in the little front area of our house. Literally the nicest surprise. So I love cute. surprises. <laughs> like, I don't get surprised enough, but when I do, like it is just like the nicest feeling. I don't know if you saw on the front of the card, it said Ottoman Tactful Tom. And you might understand why our friends call him Tactful Tom, telling his girlfriend of five years he doesn't get surprised enough in a casual sentence. So thanks as always, Tom. That's me. Really That's me. showing up yeah. again. <laughs> But thank you, Amy. We love it. And um, it's giving us what we need to continue. I feel like the flowers really brighten up the dark, dreary room we're in. Yes, they do. They're lovely. 
And I think that's just the boost in motivation that we needed to get cracking on this room. Coming back to it today, the paint has dried. This is fine. It's a nice white. Too blue, gray, don't like it. Nice, but too light, I think. I'm trying to remember that because this is plastered and not white, it might be showing this up as lighter than I think. We're back at Wix where it all started. We picked colors and we've got an idea. I'll show you inside. So the paints from yesterday have dried. We like them and we're having a bit of an idea of potentially doing a two-tone wall. Now what we're thinking is that we have the more beige, grayish color underneath and then white on top. And we want to go about two thirds of the wall up of the brownie color, the top third and the ceiling white. This is briefly what it's going to look like. I mean, it's not the best indication, but if you can imagine the wall going to about here of that color, and then all of the ceiling above of the white. In terms of how we want to do the house, I keep tossing up between like a super Scandi basic vibe and then uh, bringing back the original Victorian features. And I'm still kind of tackling with that in my mind, but I think my style is a little bit more minimal Scandi. I think it's also a lot easier to do, um, particularly because our house isn't like super Victorian. It doesn't have a lot of original features. But at least for the bedroom, this temporary bedroom that we're moving into while the rest of the house is done, I think we can have a bit of a play with it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but that's the thoughts for now. I got some of this frog tape to try out. I think it's basically masking tape, but it promises that your paint won't slip underneath, so it gives a really clean finish. We did a bit of a test. Started by painting where the ceiling meets the wall and it was gray. I'm talking a dark gray, nothing like the tester pot. So we freaked out for about an hour. It's now dried. It's the exact white that we tested with um, and we're a lot more confident. So we're officially gonna get started. First thing I'll talk you through is how we plan to split the wall. As I mentioned, this is what we're using as a bit of a inspiration pick. Um, and we just wanna make sure that it is perfectly straight because nothing will piss me off more than it being at an angle or it just not looking too good. We have measured 70 centimeters down the wall at different points. And then we're getting the level, making sure it's perfectly straight. If you just want to hold. Oh, interesting. I was thinking more like a ruler, but. No levels. Just drawing along the top of the level. And then the tape I explained earlier, we're just gonna add the whole way along in the hopes that we can stop ourselves from making any marks. Because we wanna get a perfectly straight. And then next up, Tom's gonna to be preparing the corners. Uh, anywhere the roller can't get, we're just painting first. And I'm getting started on this. Um, we've messed up. The line looks beautiful. It's very smooth, it's very straight, it's all good. But um, we didn't really take into account that we were going to be applying a base coat to the entire room. So we've made a very pristine line for the white to finish, just to go ahead and paint white underneath straight afterwards. So it looks good, but yeah, we need to go over it and basically all that prep doesn't really matter, but you live and you learn, don't you? <sighs> Something great's about to happen, hello. I got pizza and people. The line looks really good. Yeah, it does. 
didn't touch in with you that much after dinner, mostly because there's a reason that the phrase watching paint dry exists, it's not fun. But here's where we've got to. It's a white room. There's obviously the bit in the corner that's not been done yet because it's still got some drying plaster, which is annoying, but that's okay. That'll probably have to wait another day or two before we can get started there, but every other wall could get done. We're gonna leave this to dry overnight, back bright and early in the, mor in the morrow, bright and early tomorrow morning to do the second coat, get the darker coat on the bottom, and yeah. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a bed in here by Sunday night. If only you knew what was about to happen. Good morning, we are back at the house. Uh, the first coat has dried. It's looking pretty good. Uh, admittedly, Tom was on ceiling duty and there are a couple of areas that um, could have paid closer attention to detail, like this corner, which he just didn't do. In terms of what we did last night, we did a coat of paint filtered down with some water. So the reason you do this is because on newly plastered walls, it sucks up a lot of the moisture. So you wanna do about three quarters paint, one quarter water. Um, and you do one coat all around, which saves on paint, but also means that the plaster's got that water to suck to, and then future coats will stick better. Next up is probably, hopefully, our final coat. We're going to go white all around the room, up until about the point where we'd like the two-tone to begin, and then we're gonna tape it down, paint the darker tone below, and I'm hoping we should be done today. I think we will be. There I go, tempting fate again. I wonder what's going to happen. Three and a half, four hours later, we finished our second coat. The back wall is done, almost dry. Maybe I'm going a little bit ahead of schedule, but I just want to get started. And we are going to be painting all the below that darker color. Now, it comes out light. We learned this last time, so I'm not going to freak out when it looks very, very pale to begin with, but we're only going to do one wall so we can make absolute sure this is what we want to do with the rest of the room. And just when it was all going so well, disaster struck. Yeah. So it's been a few hours. Uh, there's been an incident with a nail, an A and E appointment, and a tetanus jab. Really messed up the Gantt chart. It's it's really messed up our progress. It's not normal to do that, is it? Dad, you got to be brave sometimes in the decisions you brave. make. Brave. This this right here is bravery. This is bravery, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I've made Tom stand there so that the camera will focus. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit lighter than we'd like it to be, but I think a second coat will help with that. And as well, once you've got all the furniture in, all yeah. the dark elements, exactly. uh, black lampshades. True, true. So we're going to get to a second coat. We're now debating whether we bring it all the way across, but I'm thinking, be brave. And do it. And do it. And we've just done the first coat and also ignore that bit of grey. That's me touching up the white, but I think it looks good. And I think it was just trying something a little bit out of your comfort zone. I knew that we probably wouldn't be very good painters, so I was a bit worried by the line, but I think it worked out really well. Actually, I've mentioned this already, but this is what we used. Um, I read up about it and some people swear by it. I thought it was just an expensive masking tape, but I was wrong. It works really well. So this is effectively the back wall. We're thinking a couple of black bedside lights either side of the bed. The bed will be running down here. And then a couple of pictures 
And I think what looks really cool is when you've got half the picture on the white and half on the colour below. Other than that, we haven't thought of a single thing and we're struggling to find wardrobes that I think will suit the room. So that's about where the creativity begins and ends. Tomorrow we're going to start shopping around, go to a few home stores, see what we can pick up. We're trying to get the vast majority of stuff secondhand or on the cheap, Facebook marketplace, that kind of stuff. But there's a few very specific things that I want, um, like black bedside lights and stuff like that, that don't, you know, go up for sale too often. So I might treat myself to a few items. Uh, never afraid, Martin is suspended from the ceiling effectively. This keeps happening and it's because we are so confident in something that we've never done before that we don't Google it, we just go straight ahead. What are you up to today? I don't know yet. I don't know what to do. 